Welcome everyone. I found this interesting, uh, actually a few interesting DDLC icebergs online and I looked into them a bit to try to research the topics on them and I wanted to go over them or most of them. These down here at the bottom, I'll openly admit I couldn't really find much. They're kind of really vague. This is all a dream. And there's also a lot of memes attached to that one, specifically Monica changing to a jump scare. This is actually nothing super crazy. From what I understand, it's just a simple random chance encounter you can have. That's not a wild one, but some of these were actually interesting and I wanted to explore them a bit more. So of course I did my research, decided to dive on in. So starting at the top for the stage suicide. This is a sim this one's actually pretty well known and talked about it the idea that Sayori didn't kill herself that she was killed instead by Monica the evidence being during the scene where Sayori in-games herself that's YouTube appropriate right uh, her clothes seem to be torn her fingers are damaged you can typically see like blood on them or another possibility that explained by her regretting her actions and she's like tearing at the rope to try to get it off you could also argue that tearing at the rope is because she was hanged you know as in murdered so stage suicide. The second one, Monica's name meaning. This actually has a few different meanings depending on how you look at it. Uh, one of them is in Latin. It means counselor or advisor. What was unique about the name is that Monica uses the German variation with the K versus the C. Part of that was just to have her stand out more and be more of a hint like, ooh, she's strange, you know, the red herring. But in Greek, the Monica name actually means one who remains alone, which could be also an indicator to the fact she doesn't have a route. She's always alone. Third on this list, stickers changing. This is again, just kind of a random encounter chance you can get where Yuri's sticker will change. It typically happens in act two. Yuri's sticker will just take on like a scary looking face. I don't really know the best way to describe it. Her mouth is open. Her eyes are open. It looks like she's just kind of screaming in pain and horror. Creepy poems. Again, that's one that's just really vague about the poems themselves whether it's the ones they write or the secret ones it's there's not a lot to go on there unfortunately next monica giving yandere vibes so monica shows signs of being an isolationist or manipulative yandere because there's different types to the yandere genre apparently i learned a little bit myself doing this research it's it's deep so she doesn't show signs of being full-blown yandere but she does work to get rid of the competition for MC's affection. So that makes her the isolationist and then she works to have him forget about them, making him not remember Sayori. So that's where the manipulative part comes in. Now we get down to the stuff that's actually kind of interesting. The BBC controversies, I'm not gonna cover again because those were actual real life people who unalived themselves. I'm not gonna cover that. The gist of it is that a lot of people thought they were doing it because of DDLC, but it actually turned out to be a different game but the Monica cuts herself. So in the secret poem, today I cut my skin open, there's a blacked out word, and it's believed that that word is Yuri. So if the blacked out word is Yuri's name, then that means that the person who wrote it is most likely Monica, meaning Monica is the one who is cutting herself, which this one kind of ties back into some really big overarching theory that all the girls are partitions of Monica's personality or all four of them are partitions of another individuals then deleting character files there's two different theories to this one one talks about the fact that deleting the files could affect the game because the game randomly checks for them throughout such as if you delete monica or sayori's file right away you'll get the quick ending which just shows your sayori unaliving herself right from the get-go the other theory states that you can't really delete the character files that it's kind of just an illusion that they're deleted the entire time because Monica's able to bring them back after act three, even though they're supposed to be deleted. You can even attempt to bring Monica's character file back in act four after she's supposed to be deleted. And she'll even make comments about how she doesn't want to be there anymore as if she remembers everything that happened still. So those are the two main theories to deleting character files. Uh, Sayori's a killer. This is not one that I could find anything about uh, outside of some alternate universe fanfic. So I don't really know what this one's based on, gotta be honest. 
Yuri knew Monica's evil doings and she stabbed herself to save herself. This is actually one that I had never really noticed, but I thought was really interesting. So part of this theory states that the VP role gives that character semi-sentience. So they kind of know what's going on, which may have been part of what led Sayori to her depressed state is she kind of knew the futility of everything of her existence and because yuri becomes the vp in act two she also becomes semi-sentient because yuri mentions multiple times quote monica's always listening also quote i don't care if monica is listening meaning she's somewhat aware that monica is always listening in on her and knows what's going on and is therefore most likely manipulating yuri given her ability to see beyond and listen beyond things where she shouldn't be able to so yuri stabs herself in an effort to escape being controlled by monica dan Silvato even once mentioned in an interview quote that yuri's in-game move was quote in a sparkle of clarity while trying to remain sane but the very last one that i actually really like this it was a really interesting take Monica is trying to save you. So Monica shows you the danger of wanting to escape reality. Some people want to escape from reality into a video game world. But Monica shows the dangers of that as she, a sentient being, communicates to you, another sentient being, what life is like in a video game. In a world where you're surrounded by non-sentient beings doing preordained things based on a programming of both their character who act in a way that is again based both on their programming and their character design in a world that's just based on programming there you can't do anything outside the norm everything's going to play out to a preordained in so the girls are going to fall in love with you no matter what because that's their programming you just need to pick a few words they like in a poem mini game there's no struggle there's no challenge so there's no there's no feelings of accomplishment because everything's just preordained to meet a certain end a certain standard she also shows and talks about how when the game isn't running it's like hell itself flashing lights and loud sounds and dealing with all this you can never talk to anyone either about any of these problems you're never going to make any real connections because again they're all pre-designed characters <laughs> who have all their own words that they're going to say, who have all their own actions they're going to perform. Everything's programmed and designed a specific way. And then even if you could control the game, who's to say that power wouldn't corrupt you and make you do terrible things? Break the game as Monica did when she had Sayori unalive herself. Or as she had happen with Yuri when you're forced to stay in the club room over the whole weekend during the ending of Act 2 after Yuri endgames herself. Or you could cause some other unintended consequences to your actions that you don't fully understand and can't see because you don't know and you can't see everything, right? Monica ultimately didn't want her friends to end themselves, but she accidentally got that to happen by pushing things a little bit too far. So the ultimate point is that living in a video game world really wouldn't be as great as you might think it is. And that's the end of that. Again, I couldn't find some of these other ones. I don't know if they were really anything or if they weren't. They're kind of vague and there's a lot of memes associated with them. But as always, I really appreciate you being here. I really appreciate you watching. Thank you so much. See you next time. Bye-bye.